According to the 2019 Canadian Financial Capability Survey released by the Government of Canada, 49% of Canadians admit to maintaining a budget to manage their finances successfully, which is up from 46% in 2014. Andy Anthony and Ryan Harder are financial planners and advisors for Peely Lighthouse Life and Financial in Leamington. They joined me this week to discuss ways we all can protect our financial fitness and interest during these unprecedented times, and they both agree budgeting is the key to success and should be top of mind for all Canadians. I'm Kevin McShad. Let's have this conversation. What do you think is the uh, top thing people have to assess when looking at their finances? Again, I think uh, working with your advisor closely and reviewing your own personal financial plan Um, because everyone's situation is different. So I think it's uh, really it's catered individual to individual, Kevin. And when you talk to your clients, uh, working with them during this time, what's uh, the top concern that you're hearing? Uh, the top concern right now is, uh, number one, is their income stable, right? Um, is your job stable? So fortunately, there is a lot of people where they've had stability through this entire time. Um, for some people, it was unfortunate. However, in our opinion, um, with all the government programs that are available, uh, they're making it so that everyone can put food on their table regardless of your occupation. So uh, the most common is definitely their income. And then number two, if you are invested, are my investments down right now? And what should you do to mitigate risk? You know, you bring up government pro- programs. What ones do you think are the most effective uh, to help people uh, to get through this time? Um, We're by no means experts on them, but again, uh, we do review them closely. And depending if you're a a business trying to fund payroll to not have your employees go on uh, CERB or EI, um, there's programs out available for that. And then there's obviously other ones that uh, individuals can apply for, depending on their situation. The survey also revealed that nearly 7 in 10 Canadians who are not yet retired, 69%, are preparing for retirement financially, either on their own or through a workplace pension plan. Harder provides some helpful tips on how to accelerate getting the most bang for your buck when you're ready to call it a career. Yeah, um, Kevin, I'll, I'll take this one with uh, 
that's a toughie, right? Uh, but that, that's very specific to that individual. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't, not going to give you much details on, on specifics, but first thing we would do is, is going back to the, the earlier question is, is have the client put together a budget, uh, very accurate. Uh, we look at the budget. We would update their financial plan uh, with the new information. Maybe the investments are down a little bit or, or, or something's changed. We put the new information in, and then, and then we sit with the client. We look at it. Uh, I, I mean, if the client's taking an early retirement, and they, they may not have enough uh, money saved up yet. You know, they may have, have to look at having a lower income in retirement. Um, if, if they're retiring too early. If, if, if it works, it works, but that's where the client would sit down with us and, and look at the plan. And when they're planning for retirement, how do you advise them to, just generally, uh, um, maybe they're going to experience uh, a lesser income than they're used to, so how do you prepare them financially uh, for that reality? Well, that's a good question. Uh, Many, many discussions over the years, we prepare for that, but ultimately the client, we can't control the client's spending, so we can show them, you know, here's what you're going, going to expect in retirement, here's your income. You know, maybe they were hoping for, you know, $80,000 a year of income, but because of the early retirement, they're down to 10,000, so, or they're down to 70,000 minus 10. So we can sit with them, and, and but ultimately they, they have to control their spending, so we can suggest ways of cutting this, cutting this, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's the, the biggest thing is having an accurate budget, I would say. And either one of you can answer the, this next question. I know you also advise uh, small businesses to how best to financially move forward. So if a business had to close because of the pandemic and then uh, is in the process of reopening, how would you advise them to sort of a look at uh, restarting their business from a financial perspective? Um, it's a good question as well, Kevin. I think for that one, um, again, that's going to depend on the business themselves and the industry that they're in. Uh, however, when it comes to us in regards to the planning, we just help put together uh, benefit packages and retirement planning, so group employee benefits and group retirement plans. So basically, while this was going on, uh, working closely with uh, various insurance carriers. Um, they actually applied credits to a lot of our uh, accounts, and it, this was an industry-wide thing, not specific to our company, um, where they refunded 50% of dental premiums and 10% of uh, extended health premium to go back to that owner to help kind of ease maybe their bottom line, um, basically through their benefits premium. And for other people that closed down altogether, we also were able to spend benefit plans, Kevin, so that when they do get back up and running, uh, we just fire them back up. So we have layoff provision clauses uh, within our contracts that allow the employer to do that as well. So, And for the group retirement side, um, you can also, on that, based on a month-to-month -month basis, if they're starting back up and your employees are returning to work, uh, you can reactivate that at any time as well. And Andy, I know that you're a volunteer firefighter for the municipality of Wilmington. So my final question is sort of a personal one from the standpoint. How do you think uh, frontline workers, the perception of them, have been uh, altered or changed during this time? Um, I think the perception of uh, frontline workers, it's made the public realize that you know, they still have a job to do, right? Regardless of what's going on and whether your situation is controllable or uncontrollable. Um, and then, in my opinion, like frontline workers, they aren't extraordinary people, just ordinary people who do extraordinary things. And uh, just one follow-up, what's the best part of sort of managing two separate uh, lines of responsibility in the office and in uh, as your work as a firefighter? Uh, myself, personally, I really enjoy it because uh, we don't really have a very physically active job. Um, obviously, with a desk and working with clients, it's a lot of fun, but uh, getting out and uh, working with your body is also fun, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. Andy and Ryan, I want to thank you for uh, a couple of minutes talking to us about uh, protecting your financial fitness and providing uh, your perspective, Andy, as a frontline worker. Worker, I really appreciate this 
insight and perspective and want to thank you both for your time this morning. Thank you for the phone call, Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. That was great.